guys welcome back to John's workshop and in this video we're going to go back on to the Mark engine build and we're going to get three or four bits and pieces made so as it says on the board up there we're going to do the crankshaft and also the cam hopefully so there's four pieces four main pieces in that assembly so there's the main shaft piece itself which is dead easy there's the crank web if we want to call it that there's the crank pin that goes in the conrod to drive the piston and there and there's the cam itself so as I've got there four main parts there's a mix of materials so the plan for these is all steel I think what it says on the drawings but I'm going to be straying away from that just to make life easy so I'm going to use some silver steel for the crank rod itself because that's ground to the right diameter so nothing to do to that other than get it to length and faced off so nice and easy I'll use a bit of the same silver steel for the crank pin so that's just a simple bit of turn in two diameters but quite small the crank web itself says steel I think I'm not sure yet I'll figure that out as I go along but I think I might make that out of stainless that, that could be uh, a bit more interesting and I've got some stainless here about the right diameter so that would make that job slightly easier from a well, it won't it make it more difficult but but it'll make it easier from a the stock that I've got available perspective and as I said there uh, with the crank shaft itself there's a few areas so the crank pin is soldered into the web and the crank web is soldered onto the crank shaft I may change that and go Loctite rather than solder on those. I think Loctite would give a more permanent fix than the the lightweight solder that I've got. So we'll, we'll see how we go with that. And if I go Loctite, what I'll be doing is putting some grooves in the end of the shaft, in the end of the crankshaft and the crank pin to hold the Loctite so I get a really good bond. So that might be something just a bit interesting. So we might do that or I might solder it. We'll see when we get there. So that's it I think for the notes, so other than the one at the bottom that says let's crack on. So that's what we'll do right now. I'll bring you back at the command and control centre, we'll have a quick look at the plans and then we'll crack on with the first piece out of those four. Right then guys we're up at the screen. So what we're talking about here is the shaft, the crankshaft that runs from this end bearing journal in this support here all the way through the flywheel, through various spaces, through the cam itself, and that's part of this episode, through some more spaces, into the back of the crank web, which you can see here, and then the crank pin that's pressed into that, that then drives the conrod up and down in the cylinder for the piston. So that's largely it. Probably a different, slightly different view of it here, from the top, well you can't really see it, but you can see the various spaces and the crank and the cam here and the cam follower. So that's the assembly that we're going to attempt to make these bits in this episode. So I'll join you in a minute, possibly on the lathe, on the first one of these bits that I picked to pick to do. So I'm just going to get some materials cut for all these bits and then we'll crack on with the manufacture. Alright guys, we're at the lathe and I'm starting with my two first bits of material so this is 6mm silver steel so this will be for the crankshaft and this will be for the crank pin so that's my first two bits of material cut so what we need to do first is we'll start with the crankshaft this just needs facing to length and a chamfer on each end and that's that bit complete and then the crank pin we've got a diameter to turn on both ends and a flange in the centre so when I looked at these well the first thing to note is the state of my lathe by the way so just before anybody else points it out <laughs> long overdue for a clean out and I will get around to that at some point what I really need for this not so much for this but certainly for this is a collet chuck and I don't have a collet chuck so I'm trying to figure out <laughs> how on earth I'm going to turn this in a 3 jaw chuck and I suddenly thought hang on a minute I think I do have a collet chuck so what we've done is that. Nice and simple. I've got a collet block that I use for the mill. We set that up in the three jaw. We've got a six mil collet in it. So we'll put our first piece of silver steel in there now. 
and we'll just give that a nip up. We'll get an idea on this crank, see how it doesn't matter how concentric that's running and then that will tell me, I can stick a clock on there and that will tell me whether this is a good enough setup for the crank pin where I'm going to need to turn both ends and get them concentric with each other. So we'll get the lathe powered up and we'll get this face to length. Right then guys, we're onto the eccentric cam now. So I've loaded a bit of bright mild steel up in the four jaw, so I swap back over to the four jaw. Got that clocked in within a thou. Plenty good enough for what we're doing here. So we've got the main diameter to turn first, and then we're going to offset this. And there's two ways I can largely do this cam. I can either offset it in the four jaw and turn the cam eccentric or I can put it up on the milling machine on a rotary table and mill the eccentric diameter. Both of those equally good and both equally challenging to set up but I think the four jaw while we've got it on is the easiest way of doing it so that's what we're going to do. So I'll bring you back in a minute when we get set up get this faced turned on the major diameter first and then we'll look to offset this in the four jaw.
Right guys, what we've got now is I've got my metric clock, the only one I've got with a long enough throw I think for what I need to do. So what I've done is I've slackened off two jaws opposite each other. They're still nipping but only just nipping and I've re made sure everything's zero zero all the way around on this part and what we're going to do now is shift the opposite jaws to that by I'm going to shift the part effectively by five millimeters in one direction and then we're going to tighten everything up and we'll just be checking it at the four points so I can see plus five minus five and then the same reading on both sides whatever reading that is this way and we'll tighten everything back up now you're going to struggle to see the clock here so what I'll do is try and do this off camera because I need to put the camera tripod to actually see the clock face right where I'm going to be working so I'll do that off camera once I've got it done I'll bring you back show you what that looks like on the clock and then we'll crack on and machine the eccentric on this diameter I'll try my best to get you in on this so that's that's our low point there so we're on zero each rotation of this clock is a millimeter and I've, I've been looking at my small graduations as well this is where this centerpiece comes in really useful when you're doing a long sweep so if I now roll to my high point that'll be 10 turns because I've got an offset of five millimeters and if you can see I'm hitting my zero on the high point so I'm fairly comfortable that I've got Ten, uh, five millimeter offset. Now the other way it's really difficult to do and I've not really got the right stylus tip. What I need here is a, like a mushroom flat stylus tip for this because the part's obviously off center when I'm at 90 degrees to this. So what I've done is really, and this is really cowboy fashion, but the way I've done it I'm fairly comfortable with right. I'm basically eyesighting the jaw square and I know I'm measuring well off centre but I am still on the ball of the stylus and I'm at about somewhere between 0 and 0 0.1 on that side and then if I bring the other jaw around at 90 degrees I'm now measuring the other side of the part roughly square my jaw up um, again probably at about 0 0.1 so I reckon I'm within it's hard to say because look how I don't this needle tiniest bit of movement on the chuck it's very subjective really, not ideal, but based on squaring the jaws up by eye, I think I'm within a couple of thou where I need to be the other way. So perfectly happy for what this is, a couple of thou isn't going to make any difference on this cam. So what we'll do now is we'll get the tool set up, work out what my finished diameter needs to be that I'm working to, and we'll machine the, the offset cam surface.
All right then guys, we're on to the crank web now. So I've got a piece of stainless steel, 50mm OD, which is my finish size. And we've cut that off as a thin billet. We've left ourselves a couple of mil on the width to face it to finish thickness. So what we're going to do is face this first side. I've got this squared up just to the OD because I don't know where either. These are both saw, saw cut faces, don't know where they are. So we've trued the OD up best I can and we're going to face this front side, drill and ream through the centre and then we'll spin it round, put a parallel behind it, face it to finish thickness and that will be pretty much it for the lathe work I think at that point and then everything else is onto the mill. Right guys, we've got our crank web marked out, so we've scribed our lines for the actual web section itself. We've marked our crank pin hole and we're just going to set that up with a wobble bar now over that centre point and then we're going to spot drill, drill, ream 4mm and countersink, you can see how I've got it set up in a V-block, on a parallel, in the vise. Right, we've got our first setup for the milling. So what I've done, I'm using my ground set square because it's got really sharp corners on it. And basically what I've done there is sat that on top of the vice jaw and I've lined my scribe line up with the top of that. So hopefully you can see that. So that's how we're doing all of these four. There's four to do like this, obviously two each side. So we're going to set up like that and we're going to mill that first side out up to the transition point in the centre and then we'll reposition it and mill this second line that you can just see over there the same way. So I'll show you a bit of that now.
Right guys, that's got our first side done. I'm going to clean up immensely the next thing I'm about to say. I'm incredibly disappointed with myself at the fact that tearing around trying to staircase this side out. As you can see what I've done there, I, I've gone in too deep. So I've left myself some marks in there which yeah the less said about those the better not impressed with what I've done but anyway for now this will go I'm going to carry on as I'm going for now and that will forever bug me and I can quite well see me making another one of these at some point to get rid of that we'll call it a faux pas we'll clean that up as well so what I'm going to do now is crack on with the other two sides in the same manner, well not quite the same manner but we'll try not to make that stupid mistake again and I'll bring you back when we've got that bit of machining done. Idiot. Alright well there we go guys that's got our crank web done which would be an absolutely fantastic piece of work had I not messed that up I nearly said it anyway not to worry certainly for the first go at this I'm happy with how that's come out we've deburred it all just need to get the blue off now give it a rub to get rid of any of the scratches that might still be left on from my marking out there might be a couple of there's a line there on the centre line that I just need to get rid of now what on earth could all that garbage possibly mean so for anybody who doesn't know what they are, they're what you call rescue numbers. And what they've successfully done is rescued the balls up I made of the crank web. So you can now see what I've done is I've just put a tiny point, no, 2 mil ball nose end mil in and I've gone 0.2 of a mil deep on both sides. And we've now got some, let's call them decorative features in the side of the crank web and that's got rid of my earlier faux pas that I made by being slightly too aggressive when I was roughing that out and going too deep so pleased with that that's now not going to bug me and we will call it a I don't know a weight reduction modification or something like that shall we right moving on I'll join you at the bench in a minute when we're putting all these bits and bobs together onto the crank and see what they look like. So we've got our four bits finished off. So we've got our crankshaft, our crank pin, our cam and our crank web. And you can see on the end of the crankshaft and on the end of the crank pin I've decided I'm going down there loctite route for this particular assembly so I've put some grooves in both of the shafts to hold the loctite to make that a good strong joint so the crank pin itself and I know I didn't film any of this and you'll see why just because of the the sheer size of the thing it's it's so small that I would have struggled to get footage of that it's just basic turning there's nothing special about that at all two, two diameters and a shoulder so the crank pin will fit into the crank web like that and the crankshaft should fit also into the crank web it's a good tight fit I'm not going to push that all the way in just now because I need to get it back out and the cam will also fit on the crankshaft again really good fit so would help if all that was on camera wouldn't it there we go so there we go that's everything on the crankshaft there now well everything out of this video on the crankshaft at least I've got some brass spacers to make up and again I'm not going to film those they're just basic OD turned to a diameter drilled and reamed through the bore to the 6mm OD of the crankshaft 
and they're various different diameters. There's three or four spaces that I need to turn up that fit on this crankshaft, but I'm not going to film that. It's just basic turning. Seen it thousands of times on my channel, let alone everybody else's. So yeah, happy with that. Happy with the with the cam, the way that's turned out, and the crank web with my extra special weight reduction slots on it. So that's about the end of this episode. So what we'll do now is wrap this episode up and we'll think about what we do next. Well there we go, that's the end of the crankshaft slash camshaft assembly. Happy with that, that's another two or three I mean the, the shafts are dead easy but the actual crank web itself and the, the cam two or three you know bits of machining that were a little bit more interesting so they're now done so that's another bit of the engine complete and ready for final assembly so I think we'll leave this episode at that I think it's long enough already so as usual thank you to the subscribers for your continued support of the channel which is very much appreciated and thank you to the new subscribers that have come along and just before we close, I've one kind of apology to make. I stuck my name in for the Tool Fest, I think it is 21, earlier in the year, saying I was going to get something ready for that this year. It's just not happened. So apologies for that. There's going to be nothing from me this year into that competition. I've just not had the time in the, with what's been going on in the workshop and what's been going on out of the workshop as well. So it's just not going to happen this year, which is a shame because I would have enjoyed putting something forward for that. I think if it had been last year I'd have been laughing because that's all I was making was tools but this year I've just stepped away from the tool making for a bit so never mind we'll get on to something I'm sure there'll be something similar on in 22 and I'll definitely make sure that I've got my got my sort of time put aside to do something for that. So thank you all very much for watching and we'll catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else.